Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. This is my full and complete setup guide for Simu Emulator in its latest version 1.16.0. This guide is going to go over absolutely every single setting you need for the best possible performance on any GPU or CPU, be it Intel, AMD or Nvidia. Anything you could possibly require for this emulator will be found down in the description of this video and as always if you're having any issues whatsoever please feel free to head over to my discord server and ask any questions you could possibly have over there. Since the Vulkan API a brand new graphics backend has been added in this latest CMU version it is highly recommended that you update your GPU driver to its latest version so please make sure to do that for the best possible compatibility with this new feature. Now that all that information is out of the way, let's get this guide started. Okay, so as always, we're gonna need to download our latest CMU version 1.16.0 and our latest CMU hook version. Download links for both of those can be found down below. I'm also gonna show you how you can update a CMU version you already have installed in your system, so don't worry, we'll get to that in just a few moments. For now though, we're gonna be using an application called 7-Zip and we're gonna extract CMU to a folder of its own. Then we're gonna open this folder and drag and drop our CMU hook zip file. Once again, right click it, select 7-zip and instead of selecting extract to a folder of its own select extract here. This will give you a dbghelp.dll and keystone.dll the two files that are required for the patching of and utilization of such graphics packs like clarity and fps plus plus. Now that you've done all of that I'm going to show you how you can update an older CU version that you may have installed on your system already. So your folder is going to look something like this. All you need to do to update it is grab all of these files that you have just extracted select copy and then paste those files over your old ones. Select replace the files in the destination and that is pretty much it. That is your older CMU version updated to its latest version 1.16.0c. All of your settings, saves and everything should be 100% intact meaning you can just jump straight in and play your games straight away. Now I'm also going to be showing you how to set up your graphics packs and switch over to the Vulkan API but for now I'm going to continue with this fresh installation procedure for the latest CMU version. Everyone should be doing this, you should right click, select properties, come to compatibility, select run as administrator, disable full screen optimizations, click this DPI button here, select this tick box here, and this tick box here, making sure to select this by application, click OK, click apply, and you are now done with CMU emulator compatibility setup. Next, we're going to actually be launching the emulator for the first time and getting all of its configuration done and out of the way. So when you launch it for the first time, it's going to look pretty empty like this. However, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the CMU hook plugin or CMU hook is installed. What you want to do next is click this button to download the shared fonts. These fonts are required for games like Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Once downloaded, we're going to come to options and we're going to go over some of the general settings. I'm going to show you how to set up your ML LC paths and game folders in order to properly use them on this emulator in the most efficient way possible. This is your MLC path, this is going to be storing your game updates, DLCs and saves and your game path is going to be where all of your games are stored. What you should be doing for the most efficient usage of space is to create this folder titled CMU Emulator Backup on a secondary drive which has a lot of storage. What we want to be doing is storing CMU on our operating system drive, then storing your games, updates, DLCs and save files in a completely different place. To do this, you're going to create this CMU Emulator Backup folder. All you want to do is right click, select new, create a folder and title it like so. Again, coming into this folder, you want to create another folder, right click again, select new folder and call it MLC01 just like you see here. Once you've this done, click X and we're going to be coming back to our general settings area, MLC path and click these three dots. Next, navigate back to whichever disk on which you stored it, come to your CMU emulator backup MLC01 folder and click select folder. If you created this MLC folder in the past, you need to reselect your MLC path or it's not going to correctly detect your updates, DLCs and saves. Next, you want to select whichever folder you have stored your downloaded or dumped games. You can see all of mine are right here. Instead of individually selecting each game, what you want to do is select the actual folder which contains the games themselves. 
Do like so, select OK and select the folder and once you click this X button all of your games are going to refresh into the games list just like this. You can in fact scroll down your list and in CMU Emulator you can right click, select as favourite, do this for whichever games you wish to use or whichever games you play the most often and when you scroll back to the top of your list your favourited games are going to appear like so. On top of this, you can also change the UI to appear not just as a list, but also as either icons or smaller icons. Personally, I like to use smaller icons since you can just see all of your games in one small game window, giving you easy access to loading each and every one of them. Next, we're going to come back to options, continue with our setup, and I'm now just going to quickly show you how you can set up your input mappings or controllers for use with this emulator. First of all, under Emulated Controller, you want to select Wii U Gamepad from this drop down window. Next, you want to select which controller API your specific controller is using. Since I am using a DualShock 4 controller with DS4 windows, I'm going to select X input. Then, from this controller drop down window, I'm going to select my now activated and detected controller, which I have connected to my PC. I'm then going to just set up my input mappings. If you don't know what these input mappings are, simply look up an image of the Wii U controller or the Wii U Pro controller. It's really that simple. Just do exactly that and copy everything you see on screen. For this blow mic button, I just set it to F. Show screen, I generally leave it blank since that's not really required. And next, you need to assign this controller a controller profile name. I'm just going to call it controller1, hit the save button, and there you go. You can see my controller1 profile is now set up. Now, if you're going to be playing any games in couch co-op or multiplayer on a single screen, there is going to be an additional bit of setup. Basically, all you need to do for every single additional controller is select not the Wii U gamepad, but the Wii U Pro Controller. As before, you then need to select your controller API, your controller, and set up your input maps. It's very important that the first controller, controller 1, gets mapped to the Wii U gamepad, then every additional controller gets mapped as the Wii U Pro Controller or whichever controller you wish to use. Once you have all of that figured out, there's not really too much more settings to be done here. You can simply load your profile whenever you need to use it. You also have these additional settings for rumble. I just leave mine at zero since I want to preserve my battery life. You have a button threshold and you also have access to dead zones, though to be honest, 15% is basically perfect for any controllers I've ever used with CMU. Once you've set up all of your input options, click the X and you are now done with setting any and all of that up. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to update your games with their latest updates and DLCs in the event that you haven't done so already. When swapping over to the list view, you can see your version and DLC numbered is displayed right here. To update, select File, Install Game Update or a DLC and then you're going to need to find your games update. For me, I have mine stored here under Wii U updates. Here are my updates and here you can see I have both my update data and my DLC data. To install it, it's very simple. All you need to do is select it like so. Come to your meta folder, select your meta or meta.xml file, then select open. This is going to begin the process of installing the latest DLC or update, whichever you have selected to install. Now, in my use case, it takes about three or four minutes for this to install from start to finish, so please do have patience as this process can take quite a large amount of time. And there we go, I have now successfully installed the update for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild version 208. This is the exact same process you need to follow for every single game, and similarly for the game's DLC, do the same thing. Come to its DLC folder, its meta folder, select the meta or meta.xml file, click open and then simply install it. It's very, very important for the best compatibility on many of the most popular games on CMU that you do exactly this. Please make sure that you update them to their latest versions. Next up, I'm going to be coming back to our options setting and I'm going to show you how you can download graphics packs. In this window, I'd advise clicking this little tick box for only showing installed games, then click download latest community graphics packs. This is going to begin downloading, then it's going to extract, and then it's going to install all of your graphics packs. There you go. For all of my games I own, I have now got graphics packs for each and every one of them. To be honest, for most of these games, the changes you can make to them are fairly basic, just things like resolution, shadow resolution, contrasty, which just makes the game look a little bit more colourful, and to edit them, all you have to do is just click the little tick box to activate the graphics pack, then change whichever active preset for whatever resolution or whatever setting you wish to use in the active presets 
it's on the right hand side. Now by far the most complicated game to get up and running in the best most performance state is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and obviously for that reason there are a lot of graphics packs for it. However, there is an easier way to get access to graphics packs for a specific game in your games list. Simply right click, then select edit graphics packs. This is going to open another graphics pack window that will only display the graphics packs for that specifically selected game. And as I said, since Breath of the Wild is by far the most complex game to get up and running on this emulator, let's just take a look at the graphics packs I'm going to be using. Myself, I like to use the Clarity graphics pack. Again, as I've selected it with the tick box, I can select which preset I wish to use. My personal favorite is the Surfrost preset. It's just the default clarity preset, so I'm just going to use that. Now, a lot of these graphics packs are currently not compatible with the Vulkan API backend, which was just added in this release. So if you're going to be using a Vulkan, do not use most of these packs. Now, while it says they may not be compatible, these resolution graphics packs do in fact work with a Vulkan. So I'm just going to set this to 1920 by 1080 or at 1080p, and I'm just going to set my shadow resolution to medium or 1x. Now, by far the most important graphics pack for the best performance in Breath of the Wild is FPS++. So what you want to do is click the little plus beside FPS++, then select all four of these options. We're just going to be leaving these at the default values since I have found in all of my testing that it is the best by far for compatibility. If you want to unlimit your frame rate to see how much performance you can potentially get in this game, I would advise setting it from the default of 60 to 165 though you should only really do this for performance testing for the most part you should leave this at 60 frames per second since at higher frame rates breath of the wild can have some physics issues down at the bottom of this graphics pack section you can see we also have a workaround graphics packs most of these packs are only going to be necessary if you are using the OpenGL backend. Now, if you decide to use OpenGL, you can get much, much better performance if you're using an NVIDIA GPU. So in the event that you are using OpenGL and NVIDIA, you want to select LWZX, Kakariko Torchfix, the Clouds graphics pack, and also the NVIDIA Explosion Smoke. Now, if you are not getting a better performance with OpenGL versus Vulkan and you have an NVIDIA Nvidia GPU, I would highly advise that you follow all of the performance steps in the Nvidia performance section of this video. That section is going to show you how to massively boost your performance. And again, as I said before, if you're going to be using Vulkan, please make sure to disable any of these graphics packs. So if you're using OpenGL, enable these four graphics packs. And if you're using a Vulkan, enable none of them. Hopefully I've made that as clear as I possibly can as enabling some of these graphics packs can actually give you crashes and some buggy graphics. Again, if you're changing a graphics packs for any other games, you can do the exact same thing. Simply right click, then activate whichever graphics packs suit your own specific needs depending on your own system. Thankfully, each and every one of these graphics packs comes with a nice little tidy and easy to read description, so it's very easy to figure out exactly what each of these graphics packs does. Next up, we're going to be changing the game profile again for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild since it requires quite a bit of configuring. All you need to do is right click, select edit game profile and in this CPU section we can adjust both mode and threaded quantum. Depending on the amount of cores your CPU has, you should set this to either single, dual or triple core recompiler. Please consult the on-screen graph to know which one you should be using. You should also set threaded quantum to 100,000. Again, moving over to this graphics section, there are a few settings we're going to be changing here depending on which API you're going to be using. For example, if you're using Nvidia and OpenGL, you want to change shader mull accuracy from a true to minimal. This can dramatically help you with the amount of RAM your system is using, but please, if you're using NVIDIA or AMD with Vulkan, make sure to set shader mull accuracy to true and not minimal. In this profile selection area, we also have access to specific controller profiles, though to be honest, it's not very useful for games like Breath of the Wild, more so being useful if you have specific controllers you need to map for games like Mario Kart 8. As I said before, if you're using Vulkan, make sure to set shader mull accuracy to true, but if you're on NVIDIA and using OpenGL, set it to minimal. Once you've assigned all of your settings based on what I've just explained, we can now close this game profile window. The next thing I'm going to show you is something I actually haven't shown in guides of mine before. 
I'm going to show you how you can set up your gamepad motion source in the event that you are using the same controller as I use the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller. In order to use this motion source, you're going to need this application called DS4 Windows. You'll find a link to this down in the description. In the settings of DS4 Windows, you'll find this UDP server section. Make sure to tick this little box here and this is basically all you need to do in this application once your controller is connected. Next, come back to CMU, come to Options gamepad motion source and in this section you want to select the controller that is now displayed selecting it by its slot as you can see I have done. The DualShock 4 is by far one of my favorite pads both for CMU and emulation in general so I just wanted to include that small little section for motion input. Again for console region I set this to automatic, console language I set to English since that's my preferred language and in a few minutes I'm going to show you how you can set up separate accounts if you wish to use different saves on different users on the emulator. For now, let's look at some additional settings, starting things off with CPU and mode. We're going to be leaving this at single core recompiler, and when coming to affinity, you should set this to all logical cores if you are an Intel CPU user. If you are a Ryzen, be it first, second, or Zen 2, you should experiment with first and last logical cores. Coming across to this debug section, you want to 100% make sure that none of these options are ticked. For example, if Vulkan validation layers or anything else is activated or ticked on, please, please make sure to disable it as it is going to destroy your performance. Similarly, do the exact same thing, make sure nothing is ticked in this section. Coming down to custom timer, we're going to be setting this from its CMU default to QPC. So you're going to be setting it to QPC at 1x speed. You're also going to want to change your MM timer from system default to 1 millisecond. These can help with boosting your performance a few frames per second. So again, QPC at 1x speed, MM timer of 1 millisecond, and I would also advise turning on use CMU hook H.264. While CMU does have native H.264 video decoder, I think CMU hooks looks better, so just use that. Again, to reiterate some settings, make sure you're using QPC at 1x speed and MM timer accuracy of 1 millisecond. Now that we're done with all those settings, let's come back to options and get into the juicy settings. Let's come to general, and we're now going to take a look at all of these different options. Again, we've dealt with most of the most important things in this section. One thing you should really do is activate automatically check for updates. This is going to make sure that anytime a new CMU public build is released, it's going to get downloaded and installed on your computer, keeping you as up to date on the emulator as possible. Again, I'm just going to disable a Discord rich presence since that's something I just don't like to have activated on any of my emulators. Coming across to the graphics tab, this is where all of the new awesome stuff is. As you can see, we have this graphics API selection. We now not only have OpenGL, but we also have the Vulkan API. When you select Vulkan, you are also going to be able to select which GPU you wish to use. Since I'm using an NVIDIA 1080 Ti, that's what I would select since that is my most powerful and dedicated GPU. If you are an AMD GPU user, please make sure to select your discrete AMD GPU from this drop-down list. Now, if you are an NVIDIA GPU user, you can still get better performance as I displayed in previous videos of mine using OpenGL, especially so if you use the performance tweaks I'm going to be showing a little bit later on. In the event that you're going to be using an Intel iGPU even for testing, please make sure that you select it again from your drop down window and that you are also connecting to the actual display port, HDMI port or a DVI port on your motherboard in order to have the best compatibility with that GPU. Another very important step is the fact that full sync at GX2 draw done needs to be on if you are using the Vulkan API. If you're using OpenGL, you can disable it and get a very nice performance boost on NVIDIA GPUs. So basically, if you're using OpenGL and NVIDIA or AMD, use these settings. But if you're using Vulkan, select it like so, turn on full sync at GX2 draw done and use the displayed settings you can see on screen right now. As I said, it's very, very important that if you're using Vulkan, you use full sync at GX2 draw done, so please remember to activate it. In relation to overlays, as before, you can select top left, center, or wherever you want to display it. Personally, I like to leave it at top right, and I only really like to leave my FPS displayed. 
Scale wise I also like to set this to 150% since 100 is a little bit small and in addition to those overlays we also have these notifications. I'm going to set this to top left but I'm only going to leave the shader compiler enabled and again as with the previous overlay I'm going to set this to 150%. Now that we cover graphics let's move on to audio and for our API we're going to be changing this from direct sound to X audio 2. If in any of your games you encounter weird stuttery or or a broken audio, please make sure to set your latency from the default of 24 to a higher value, just raise its value until the stutter or any kind of weird crackling disappears. Now in relation to any of these TV or gamepad devices, I simply leave them as a primary sound driver since that's the easiest thing to do. If you want to change your volume, simply move this slider and one thing you really should do at least for your TV device is change it from stereo to surround. This is going to give you a much more pleasant audio experience especially for games that support it like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. On top of that, if you're using any games, for example Star Fox Zero that require a game pad audio again set this from disabled to your primary sound driver and this is only going to be set at stereo please also make sure to turn the volume up so that you can hear any audio coming from games that require this audio source now that we've dealt with sound and graphics let's move on to our final section in this area account creation and management this section is very important if you want to set up multiple users on CMU emulator as you can see my active account is showing right here this is just the the default one that the emulator is going to make. If you wish to create a second account that's going to use separate saves, all you have to do is select create then enter the name or me name that you wish for that account to hold. Click OK and once you come to this drop down window you should see you now not only have default but also the second account which I have named BSOD2. Again, if you want to make a third account for a third user on your computer to use this emulator, simply create a third account. They are all going to be listed and fully be usable like so. If you've dumped your files from your Nintendo Wii U, you can also enable the online mode, though as this warning at the top says, please be aware that the online mode lets you connect to official Nintendo servers and by doing that you are going to risk getting your account banned by doing so. In addition to creating new accounts, you can also delete older accounts and swap between them using the options section which I'll show you in just a moment. If you wish to delete an account, simply select it like so, I'm just going to select BSOD3 from this drop window select delete yes and there you go you can see that that account has been deleted so that's pretty much it in relation to the settings that you're going to need to change in CMU emulator so as long as you followed exactly what I said you can click the X to close this section as I said you can come to options active account and select whichever account it is you want to use from right here please be aware that each of these accounts is going to use completely different save directories so if your game saves are not showing up for any of your games you're loading please make sure you're using the correct account. In relation to CMU specific settings that's pretty much it however if you are an Nvidia GPU user I'm now going to show you the most optimal settings for getting the best performance using OpenGL. What you need to do is right click select Nvidia control panel then once the panel opens you're going to come to this top section that says adjust image settings with preview. Once here you want to select use the advanced 3D image settings select take me there this is going to bring you to this section then you need to come to program settings. Once in this section click the add button and then you're going to be selecting this Wii U emulator or CMU icon. Simply double click it and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom of this section. Basically what you need to do or what I do at least is I set a vertical sync to off that's because I use a 144 hertz screen. If you use a 60 hertz panel use either fast sync or just set vsync to on. You're also going to want to set triple buffering to on threaded optimization also to on this setting is very important for OpenGL performance scrolling up another little bit you want to set power and management mode from optimal to prefer maximum performance on top of this you also want to set your OpenGL rendering GPU to your actual Nvidia GPU not the global default in the past this low latency mode was called maximum pre-rendered frames however while in the past we would set this to one by setting it to off it's basically the same thing so just make sure to turn low latency mode off. 
By using all of these settings in combination with all of the proper settings I showed you for NVIDIA GPUs and OpenGL previously, you are going to get a massive performance boost, especially if you've not used these settings before. This threaded optimization setting alone can boost your frame rates from between 40 to 60%, so it is massively important that you apply this setting. In relation to AMD GPU users, as long as you are using the latest 2020 Adrenaline driver releases, you already have the most optimal settings since the global defaults there are the best settings for CMU emulator. The next thing we're going to be doing is adjusting our computer's power plan to squeeze a little bit more performance out of our CPUs. Right click your windows icon, select power options, maximize this window and then select additional power settings. Once this window opens up, you want to select either ultimate performance plan or if that is not available, select high performance. Both of these are going to give you identical performance in CMU, but in comparison to the balanced power plan, it can give you quite a bit more performance, especially so if you are a laptop user. Now, I also want to show you some optimizations you can make in the event that you have a very low RAM amount like 4 or 8 gigabytes. What you want to do is you want to search for control panel and then open the app within Windows. Once here, select system and security then select system here then once here you want to select advanced system settings once this new window pops up we are looking for this performance section right here simply click this settings button next move over to advanced and it is this virtual memory or paging file area we are looking for as you can see even though I myself have 32 gigabytes of RAM, I still have my paging file or a virtual memory pool set to 10,000 megabytes. Especially so if you have a low RAM amount like 4 or 8 gigabytes, you should set this custom size on your OS drive to 10,000 megabytes each. If I right click here and select task manager, then come to my performance tab, you can see exactly how much RAM or committed memory I have available. Since I have 32 gigabytes within my system and this additional 10 gigabytes, I basically have 42 gigabytes of usable RAM on my system. Now, paging file is going to be very slow in comparison to actual RAM, but in the event that you have very, very low RAM amounts, like I said, 4 or 8 gigabytes, if you have this paging file and you use a very shader or RAM intensive program like CMU, this page file will help your games not to instantly crash as soon as you run out of memory. Memory. Once you've applied all the settings shown throughout this video, please remember to restart, especially so if you've just applied a new page file or updated any of your GPU drivers. In relation to the actual running of and setting up of CMU Emulator, you are now ready to run any of your games and have the best performance possible. As I said previously, if you are an NVIDIA GPU user and you followed all the settings I just showed, you should 100% be using OpenGL and disabling full sync at GX2 draw done since you will get far, far superior performance versus the Vulkan API. If you're using an AMD GPU, make sure to use Vulkan and select your graphics device from this drop down window. And as I've said multiple times now, please, please make sure if you're using Vulkan to also enable full sync at GX2 draw done. And there you go guys, you are now ready to boot any of your favorite games on a CMU emulator. And as long as you've followed all of these steps and settings shown thus far, you're going to have an awesome experience and outstanding performance. As always guys, please if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave it a like down below. If you're having any issues with anything at all, please do leave me a comment down below or contact me over on my Discord server, links to which you will find down in this video's description. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.